Hello and welcome to the final video for Road to 26.2. Today is May the 5th, 2019. I am going to be running the ABP Southampton Marathon. It's been 18 long hard weeks of training which have culminated in today. Excited, nervous, but ready and I'm going to take you on the journey with me. It is half five in the morning and I'm setting off for about six o'clock to get to Southampton for seven. I've literally been up for about half an hour just getting some things ready so I'll show you what I've got. The first thing would start off to be what I'm currently wearing at the moment. So it's not too warm out today, um, but just some general socks, some joggers. I've got my underwear underpants and also my New Balance uh, five inch shorts underneath, which I'm gonna wear for race day. So I'm all prepared in that department. And then what I've also got on is just obviously this jacket with a running top underneath and a fleece as well. Excitingly, for the marathon itself, because we're supporting St Wilfred's Hospice, we are wearing this beauty. And then I'll show you what I'm actually gonna have packed in my bag as well. The main things, got a hat just in case it get cold. There's a spare top, socks. So I'll put these on actually closer to the time because I need to put cream on my feet to stop the chafing when I'm running. Also just got things like my glasses, my earphones. <laughs> earphones essential obviously on the way to make sure I get pumped for this that motivational music one of the key things I'll be taking with me is in terms of energy now I'm planning on for this run taking four energy gels I've done in my practice leading up to today my longest run was 24 miles and I took three energy gels on that now I'm going to take four with me and I might have one actually at the start of the race as well depending on how well fueled I am sis science and sport so I'll probably take this and I've got another pack with me just take the whole lot, just, you know, you never really know. Um, I'm planning on using these the whole way around rather than whatever they have there. I think they actually have science and sport as well, but I don't really want to have to stop off and go to stations. I want to just take them on when I need it. I'm going to take them every six miles, hopefully, saying that's average out at around every 45, 50 minutes. Morning, Dad. What was up? You all right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the main man. You're not running with me this time. The camera run today. <laughs> Point yourself with this. As well as that for fuel, I'm going to take um, a banana, or a couple of bananas with me, probably one before, maybe one after. Depends on the hunger. I'm not very hungry at the moment. I've still yet to eat breakfast. Um, I'm gonna take one of these Shrek protein power um, bars because they're really good actually for a boost of energy. I had one last night because I was really hungry when I went to bed after having my dinner. And then other than that, it's just of course water. Obviously my running trainers, which are the Hoka One Clifton 5s. And yeah, that's everything. No real need for any kind of cold weather wear because Yes, it's it's not going to be particularly warm, but it's very ideal conditions for running. It's clear skies, around about eight degrees when we start at nine o'clock. That's what's forecasted anyway. Who knows what's going to happen? And then hopefully when I come in to finish around 12, half 12, one o'clock, it will be about 12 degrees with a little bit of overcast. No wind, which is really, really good. But yeah, I'm used to running in these kind, this kind of condition because when I did the Hampton Court Half Marathon, it's very much the same kind of temperatures. I think it was actually about five, six degrees when we set off and that that was that did feel quite cold but obviously when you're running a marathon you've got to warm up very quickly um but yeah getting my bag packed i'll check in with you when i'm actually eating my breakfast peanut butter and jam on toast it's what i've been having before all of my long runs so wouldn't change it now just for the marathon and it doesn't upset my stomach about three slices of white bread just with some peanut butter and jam on top great combination keeps it light on the stomach and it's a good source of carbs which will hopefully see me through the race. It might not be the last thing that I eat before running. I might have a banana, one of those bars, maybe even an energy gel just before. Depends how hungry I'm feeling. Um, but this will be one of the last things to fuel me on my run. It's nearly six o'clock so it's best to eat about three hours before. I've had to upgrade to a puffer jacket because it's actually freezing out. Got my gloves as well. Let's go! So cold! Oh my god! In six hours time, about six hours time, I'll be finishing the marathon. What if you do? Yeah, 
near the start line already. About 25 minutes. It's really cold. It's a little cold in the fall, it's gonna be. So I came in about 3.22, 3.24, somewhere around there, didn't really look. Um, on my Garmin it was a little bit more than 26.2, but that is one of the hardest things ever. Um, the hills are horrendous, and yeah, just going to soak it all in now. A great atmosphere the whole way around as well. Oh, happy, can't really say much, but talk about it in a little bit, enjoy it. A bit emotional as well, in a bit. done on the way home now. Mum, Dad, how did you find that? It wonderful. was very emotional. Yeah. That's wonderful. Wonderful. You did really well. That, yeah, cheers, man. We're both really proud of you, but it's very emotional. Cheers, guys. Definitely the most fulfilling experience ever. Doing that over 18 weeks and then finally doing the marathon. First half's quite enjoyable, second half not so, and that is the hideous course, without a doubt, that I've ever seen going over Itchen Bridge twice and then the last four miles of the marathon and half marathon course being completely uphill is absolutely killer I'll probably do another marathon in the future I hope to get a quicker time I think I came in at around 321 and a bit uh, which I'm very happy with considering my initial goal was 330 so yeah time to relax now I need a cream egg can't lie I feel very sick Oh, I don't know if that's travel sickness or post race. Oh, I feel I'm gonna heave. Just get me home. So I don't feel sick anymore. I was dehydration and I'm eating food. I had chicken nuggets and chips in the chip shop because chippy was like my favourite meal. Um, always has been really since I was younger. Always is my go-to as well for like a cheap meal. And now I've got stuff left over from. Easter, so I've been eating Easter eggs and I've got this. An Easter egg with some. Hello, um, it's about 10 to 8 and I'm actually just about to go to bed. I'm not even joking. I am shattered. Cream crackers, as you can expect after running a marathon. As hilly as Southampton, 230 meters elevation. That's double London. Oh. First of all, I'm going to do kind of like a race report, if you like. So just to analyse what my kind of race plan was. And if I executed that well, general thoughts about the race and the course, etc. So I'm going to fast forward to my future self. In three, two, one. Whoa. How have we done that? Magic. Future Jack tells past Jack, your legs are going to feel like absolute...
tomorrow. Oh my god, kills. We're also going to have a lot of good food and a lot of good rest, so swings and roundabouts. First of all, I want to start with something very important, and that is the fact that the original aim was for 330 marathon. What we got was 321, so we broke um, off the original time we planned to get by 9 minutes. Secondly, just want to say about what my strategy was from the start. So you'll see that I positioned myself at the start in quite a kind of slow group. It's a, it was a mix of half marathon and marathon runners. I think there were a thousand marathon runners on the day and about 8,000 half marathon runners. So yeah, it, it got quite mixed, but um, that's why as well when I came through at the end, you'll see that there weren't too many people around me. There was a 140 pacer for the half marathon. I thought that going off my training, I wanted to position myself in that 140 kind of zone for the first first half of the marathon um, i did that i came in alongside him um so i the first uh, half marathon i did a 140 57 so with any kind of race or marathon if you're going to do it well you need to do it in negative splits because that's the way you pace it well i was doing it in negative splits until around mile i think it was 20 20 or 21 i hit a wall um and part of that I'll come on to in a second is because of how hilly Southampton is. And the last five miles is hills, other than the last mile, which is going downhill, which is why I did it quickly. But the last four, oh my gosh, I, I was hitting negatives, but then I just couldn't. It's so, I built so much lactic acid in my legs because it is such a hilly course, I couldn't maintain it. So that's why maybe on a flatter course it could have come in maybe a couple of minutes quicker elevation gain is how much how many meters you're going uh, climbing if you like um over the whole of the course so to put that into context hampton court half marathon the whole elevation gain for that 13.1 miles is 33 meters very flat course very flat again leads half 139 meters so that is quite a hilly course um that was that was a struggle, especially on a hot day, actually. For marathons, though, so for majors in the UK, London is 113 metres, so again, very flat. And then Brighton is 190. So I think with Brighton, it starts off quite hilly, but it evens out, and then you have a bit of downhill towards the end. Southampton's overall elevation, 280 metres. More than double London, about two and a half, and it's 50% more than Brighton. <laughs> It is near about 800% more than Hampton Court Half, and it's double Leeds, but bear in mind with the Leeds Half, if you do another one, it would be about that. So, yeah, very hilly, and that's why it's not the quickest route for getting PBs, I'd say, but if in the future I'm going to do a, another marathon, I'll probably try and aim for one on a, on a flatter course just to try and maybe get a better time. But in terms of the experience and the challenge, oh my gosh, yeah, incredible. Another thing I want to talk about is my heart rate. So I actually average 160 beats per minute. You don't know where your exact lactic threshold is, but in, according to my heart rate zones, that's just in lactic threshold. So that's why I think my legs bonked out towards the end because of those hills. Um, I probably pushed it a little bit too hard for the two miles before that and then that's why I had too much lactic in my legs and that's why I couldn't maintain that pace. So that kind of shows but 160 beats per minute for a marathon, pretty happy with that. Yeah, that's kind of the analysis bit if you like and we'll go back to past Jack who's going to talk a little bit more about stuff. See you in a bit. Whoa. We're back. 18 weeks, the hardest weeks that I've definitely ever had to go through. But it's been the most fulfilling experience. I've said this quite a lot of times to people I've spoken to. The most exper fulfilling experience that I think I've ever been through. It's enlightening. You learn so much about yourself and your own capacity. You know, I've just done two years dusting around at university. There's a contrast from going from that to what I've just been going through for the past 18 weeks and probably extending over 18 weeks really because the whole running thing with work it's it's been ongoing since i started my placement but definitely in the last 18 weeks it's been intense i've had to keep myself driven and keep myself dedicated but you know there are three really key things which have helped me to do that first of all doing this for st wilfrid's hospice so the note by the way we had to keep the number on our chest which was inconveniently over st wilfrid's but I did have it all on the back, uh, thank God, which was ideal. I was slightly nervous about raising money um, in the in the first place, to be quite honest, because 
my affiliation, if you like, with the hospice is it comes from my family and doing this for my mum and for my uncle um, because obviously Nanny Mo um, was in, in St Wilfred's Hospice's care but I was quite nervous about doing it because obviously it was quite a new thing for me but the people there and are the most unbelievable people ever in terms of the support they provide just how generally how completely just lovely nice they, they've been throughout this whole 18 weeks and supportive and actually going there and understanding more about the work they do in, in, in terms of the community in terms of looking after people in palliative care and seeing the environment and what the plans are for the build for their new site in Bosham, it, it's just really unbelievable and really inspiring to see what they do for people in need in the local community. So, you know, that's been the main motivation throughout this, and the fact that we have raised 1.2k it absolutely mind boggles me. Thank you, everyone, so much for the helping to reach that target because it's unbelievable and they're going to benefit from this and keep on doing the work that they do because of that money obviously they can't run without the you know donations such as these so it's fantastic and knowing that i've been doing it for them has definitely helped to drive me to get through all these training runs and through the marathon as well but yeah so some wilfreds of course always you know number one with this number two is my family um, my mum, my dad, especially my uncle as well, um, Uncle Phil, and just the rest of my family as well, doing it for them. Um, people may not know, but my grandparents all passed away either before I was born or when I was very young. I never really knew my grandparents, and doing this whole thing kind of makes me feel like I've done something for them, and in particular Nanny Mo, and I've done them proud. And it, it makes me feel a bit closer to them. So yeah, there's an element of doing it for my, yeah, doing it for my family, and in general as well, just making my parents proud. Every, people know I'm very close to my parents, and everything I actually really do is, is for them. I, they're always in my mind, so there's no doubt in my mind that they have been a, a, a massive motivation for me to, to help getting through this, and have helped me to be resilient. Um, my mum said the other day, I ever get a shout out for washing your clothes, <laughs> your running uh, gear, you know, every every day, etc. So yes, thank you, mum. That's made it a lot easier. Just little things as well, such as putting up with my moods, keeping me going when I have to get up in the morning to do these training runs when I get home from work and I don't feel like it. Just picking me up all the time and being there for me. My parents are the best in the world for doing that. And, I wouldn't swap them for the world. My dad as well, coming out on a bike when I did a 24 miler, the filming things for me. Being there for every single twist and turn, um, not just in the past 18 weeks, but in life as well. And of course, my sister, who was there today, um, the best sister ever, supported me. The, the really funny thing is, the way we got over 1K was she donated. Um, and then she was out with all of her friends and I, I checked my emails and I just had a flurry of emails saying you've received a donation, donation. And her and all of her mates had donated. It, it, a lot of them as well. It, can, it contributed to a lot of money. So yeah, family number two was always massive motivation to get this done. Number three is for me because I wanted to prove that I have the ability to do something like this and the mental strength and the resilience to do it. Um, I think my circumstances have been quite hard this year and the fact that I'm commuting to work and first year on placement, which is a, quite a taxing thing for anyone to do. Coming off the back of two years of university with a lot, a lot of alcohol cons consumption, not being in the best shape. I'm not an athlete by any means. I haven't got athletic genes. I've got fat calves, which don't help for a runner. And I'm not the slightest of builds as well. Uh, people say I'm very skinny, but I am. I'd say I'm relatively, you know, bigger boned. I'm not a very slim person, um, so I'm not athletic, and I haven't been. And um, one of my previous, you know, from the past is when I was you know, 13 to 15 years old. I was relatively good at football, and I always regret the fact that I never maybe progressed in in football. I always think I had a footballing brain, but I was never athletic enough, and I was quite pudgy didn't have the acceleration over a certain amount of yards and I had a certain level of physicality but I wasn't athletic and football nowadays you know athletic and that's always something that's bogged me down and I use that as motivation as well because I wanted to prove that I can do something athletic 
three hours 21 in a marathon with 230 meters elevation that's not bad running 80 miles a week with work that takes a little bit of physical ability yeah doing it for myself and something to be proud of and look back on really um i've now got two half marathon medals and a marathon medal um i'm proud it's quite surreal actually to, to think that it's done but it is i'm going to carry this without throughout whatever I do. I, I actually love running. I think it's taught me so much about when to keep going, when the going gets tough, that your body is a very powerful tool that can do a lot and you need to listen to it as well. That's a very important thing. I'm very in tune with my body now. Don't neglect it. Don't do stupid things to it because it is your tool and you only get one. So I've I don't know, I probably knocked a couple of years of my life by training for this marathon and the taxing that I put on my heart. What's my heart rate? It's quite low. That's good. Yeah, that's the deep stuff out of the way. It was a very emotional experience going over that line. <laughs> I think I got to about a mile, mile, mile to go. I had a, little, a couple of tears. And when I saw my mum and dad on the side, when I'd gone over the finish line, burst into tears and just gave me a hug. Um, yeah, quite overwhelming. Well, I just want to say as well, um, one thing I have learned from this is that I have some unbelievable friends um, and people that I actually know. First of all, people who obviously are my closest friends who've really supported me throughout all of this and haven't been, oh, Jack, what are you doing? Running, doing a YouTube thing, but actually supporting me through it. You know who you are. <laughs> New friends as well, and, and maybe people who I, I'm, I'm not as, as close with, but I you know, classes, my mates and my friends who've, you know, dropped me a message maybe um, throughout the training or after runs and said, you know, keep going or well done, we're proud of you and things like that. It, it means a lot. People who've donated, who've shared it, um, it's been very overwhelming actually and it makes me realise that I have a lot of special people in my life that I know. So thank you to all of you. And not only them people, but people who I've met through running as well. Um, so people through Instagram who we all kind of spur each other on with our different races and runs um, some very inspiring people who've helped me to stick with it um, the running community is an absolutely wonderful thing and it's something that I want to continue to get into a little bit more I'm, I'm nowhere near into one you know you've got your park runs you've got your running groups um, etc your running communities because I live in a relatively remote place when it comes to running I need to really explore that and that's what I aim to do now in the future um, is the next step of getting into running. Get into that community a bit more um, because it's it's like no other. The support that you get from other people is so uplifting. It's not like sports where sometimes there's a little bit of animosity, etc. But you're doing something which is so taxing on your body and you need the support from other people. So the running community is fantastic and it's something that I want to stay within um, as well. So yeah, thank you everyone for your support. You all know who you are. Um, and yeah, a lot of love for all of you, um, I really do appreciate it. I'm going to stop being a little wet wipe now and just say what is to come in terms of next steps. Well, I'm going to have a break from running of course, I need to let my body recover, I'm going to enjoy some nice food, enjoy some beers, carry on, I have a very strong month and a half finish of my placement where I still want to do a lot of things. Um, and continue to stay in contact with everyone who have has kind of come on this journey with me. Um, I'm going to be staying in touch with obviously some Wilfords Hospice. We've got a tour at their new hospice in August. I might do a little vlog for that so you can actually see what the money's going towards. Maybe even just do another video based on what the money will contribute to because I think it's key for people who've donated to actually see that, that output, um, of course. So yeah. That's what's coming from me. Road to 26.2 is complete. There will be most likely a new challenge <laughs> in the future. The YouTube will continue because I like it, I enjoy it. The vlogs will get better because I'll have more time to dedicate to them. Um, but yeah, you, haven't, you certainly haven't seen the last of this. So yeah, I'm going to cap that off. Thank you everyone for watching. For, thank you everyone for supporting the Road to 26.2. Thank you everyone for supporting the fundraiser for St Wilfrid's Hospice and give this a like, a share, tell people about this 
journey, if they want to get into running, show them this and that it's not all sunshine and rainbows. And that's one other thing I just very want to quickly want to say. My feet, I got two blisters today. They are in impeccable condition. Impeccable. So frustrating that. <laughs> Look after your feet, people. They are a very, very precious tool. But yeah, thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Not with Roads 26.2, because that's done. We've got this. Um, but yeah, Jack Gills will be returning. See you in a bit.